Okay, let's get into it. So welcome, thank you for joining us today. Another one of Credit Watch's webinars. Today we will be discussing or asking the question, presenting a solution for you, what does directed due diligence look like? My name is Patrick Coglin, CEO at Creditor Watch. As most of you would know, plenty of um, people joining us again. Thank you for that. A little bit of housekeeping. So please do ask questions. As always, I try to get to them in the webinar itself, but if I don't, I will get back to you or someone will get back to you within sort of 24 hours. Um, similar time frame for the slides and a recording of the webinar will be sent out as well. If there's anything that you do want to get in contact with us about more urgently, then of course, um, plenty of contact us options, phone call, live chat on our website, um, email, et cetera. Um, so please don't be shy. We'd like to be able to answer questions. Today's agenda, obviously touch on Creditor Watch very quickly. We're gonna understand potential director risks such as insolvency and bankruptcy. Look at some statistics that link in with um, adverse cross directorships, bankruptcies, company failures, what we're seeing out there. It'll be off the back of our most recent small business risk review, but also a few stats that we've pulled from APSA, um, which is the government department that looks after personal insolvencies. A live demonstration of director due diligence in all its glory, of course. We wouldn't miss out on that. And um, I will obviously try to slip in a poll question along the way too. So who are we? We are Creditor Watch, Australia's leading commercial credit reporting bureau with over 50,000 customers around Australia. Um, a wide variety of credit management tools, reports, scores, solutions, software, um, very tech focused here over at Creditor Watch. Real, we, are, we are releasing new products and features on a very regular basis. And as you can see here, this is just a quick snapshot of what we can provide. Credit reports, very strong in the monitoring and alerts sector. Um, Datalogic Plus is our trade program. Directed due diligence, what we're talking about today, it's the most important thing today, obviously, is looking at the individuals behind a company. Okay, so previously we used to have two sort of features or products called um, cross directorship alerts and bankruptcy plus. We've combined them together to talk about uh, and call it director due diligence, um, a single subscription, um, a single offering, which will obviously provide um, the ability to, to cover both the adverse against the directors and shareholders behind a business, um, but also get the ongoing um, due diligence as well via the adverse cross directorship feature. A play easy is our online credit application automated decisioning solution, and of course, PPSR Logic. Um, I will touch on Data Logic Plus as well. Um, we've just released a new sexier looking version, much more insightful, some fantastic figures, easy to find everything. It's got a nice overhaul lick of paint, but also um, a lot more data in there as well. So if you are a Data Logic Plus customer, please jump in there and have a look. If you've got any questions, let us know. But We'll be doing a webinar on that and EDM and our sales team will be reaching out to you to answer any questions that you might have about that. But let's continue on. So Credit Watch objective here. At Credit Watch, is our, our goal is to make it as easy as possible to identify credit risk and minimise bad debt. That's upfront and ongoing due diligence. Um, assessing the individuals behind a business forms a big part of this and that's why we have developed directed due diligence, which is obviously what we're looking at today. So some of you may have joined me for a previous one that I ran a few months ago and we got some really good feedback on the way that we kind of introduced it and got you to start thinking about it. So we've gone with, with a similar journey, similar path, similar way of communicating that. And what we're, what we're challenging you to do or getting you to do is imagine you are about to join a board. Um, now everyone's mind probably goes straight to Westpac. I'll talk about that. Just imagine you are joining a board. Um, there are certain things, possible risks that you need to consider along the way. Regulatory risk, okay? Where you might be liable should the company breach the law. Um, so very topical given um, what Westpac is going through and a number of other companies in that KYC, AML, um, you know, Austrac space. Financial and insolvency risk, where you may be liable for an organization's debts, 
Um, board performance, ideally you wanna be getting along with the rest of the board, working in harmony, being effective and efficient, um, but also fulfilling your fiduciary duties. And of course, reputational risk. As a director, the company's performance is a reflection upon yourself. So if you are joining a company that is already struggling, you're coming on board to hopefully turn it around, great, but what happens if you join a board that you think is in a great position um, and, and, and the company, sorry, you join a company on the board that you think is in a great position and um, all of a sudden it goes into administration or worse, what does that do to your um, reputation going forward? So it's a really good way to think about it. As a credit manager, finance manager, CFO, accounts receivable manager, someone who's responsible for possibly credit risk or even on the other side, supplier risk, plenty of our customers now monitoring their suppliers from a procurement point of view, as important sometimes as keeping an eye on your debtors. Um, we want you thinking about these sort of things when you are bringing on a new company um, or when you are assessing the credit risk of existing customers. It's a really good way to think about it. It's a really good way to put yourself um, in the picture so you can you know, take the care that's required and understand the importance um, of, of understanding potential director risks that exist. So some questions to ask, documents that you would be reviewing if you were joining a board um, and, and, and similar process to go through. Obviously, it's all very dependent on, you know, credit limits that's being requested here. If it's a $5,000 credit limit, you know, the, the amount of work that needs to go into this is going to be fairly minimal and you, could, you can actually automate most of that via Creditor Watch itself um, through either a plays or within Creditor Watch with a simple quick check of their credit report. Um, however, if it's much more, it's a much larger credit limit um, or there's a, a bigger risk there that you can see or feel, um, then of course there's more due diligence you can do. So a couple of areas here. So going back to that financial insolvency risk, um, as a director, you may be liable for an organization's debts. The organization solvent? Are you comfortable with their financial position? Are you comfortable with their accounting practices? So these are questions to ask. And then of course the documents, no surprises here, financial statements from the last two years, if you can get your hands on it, either from ASIC, from Creditor Watch, or by asking the company direct. Um, and then obviously take it a step further, conversation with your accountant or auditor, though that would be a fairly um, uh, extreme measure. It's certainly something we have seen take place in the past regulatory risk. So are they liable? Are they breaching um, their statutory duties? Are they breaching the law, legislation, et cetera, regardless of whether it's industry specific or just um, you know corporate law specific in general? So you need to be able to confidently answer questions like, have there been any serious legislative breaches or upcoming ones? Um, are they flagging issues? thinking about safe harbor for smaller organizations as well. So obviously you want to you want to be trying to stay on top of that, perform the due diligence as much as much as possible. Board performance, obviously a board that gets along is going to be much more effective and efficient. You want to be joining or doing business with a company that follows these sort of premises as well. So are they are they working well together? The directors have a good working relationship. Are you gonna get along with them? These are questions that you can obviously um, uh, pivot on to make it more relevant for you as that person who's assessing credit risk. Um, you wanna understand who are the people behind the business? Who are, who's running the business? Who are the directors? Potentially who are the shareholders if they're one and the same? Let's have a look at you know, is there any adverse chatter out there? Can I get my hands on board papers, uh, committee reports? Can I chat with any of the directors themselves? Um, if you're dealing with a small business, you're most likely dealing with the director. For those larger organisations, it's much different. And then, of course, reputational risk. Um, you, you may not incur a bad debt as a supplier to a company. However, if their reputation um, is poor if they are dragged through the media for um, you know negative actions, uh, certain things that have taken place out there, and your name is associated with that organisation as a supplier to them. What does that do to your business? 
all right? It's not always just about assessing the credit risk. Reputational risk is a really important one, both on the supplier side and also on the debtor side, regardless of which end of the spectrum you're trading with that company. Um, reputational risk is a big one. The, the world is a much smaller place. Information is being fed out into social media world and the internet at, a, at, a, at an alarming pace. It is very difficult uh, to control the narrative once negative information is out there. So it's important that you're doing that upfront and ongoing due diligence. So great way to sort of think about how you should be assessing risk, how you should be assessing those businesses that you're dealing with as a supplier or as a debtor yourself. So some Creditor Watch statistics and insights on cross directorships, bankruptcies and failures. Um, so this is looking at statistics from Feb through to November. Um, total risk alerts that we have sent, over 2 million risk alerts this year. Um, number of adverse cross directorships included in this accounts for about 6%, um, 144,000. Um, number of companies with an, with, a, with an adverse cross director, so 21,000 companies with new adverse cross directorships since Feb, so you would have got an alert for that if you were monitoring um, a debtor. So I just got a, I've got a, a demo of this later on or a, a visual of this. However, the way cross directorships works is if I am bringing on a company, um, John Smith's Fish and Chips, as a debtor, as a customer, I'm monitoring them. However, with director due diligence turned on, if John Smith's other companies that he's a director of start to uh, incur bad debts, payment defaults, court actions, going to administration, I'm going to get alerts for those actions on those other companies that I'm not trading with. It's a great way to be proactive and get ahead of um, you know, an oncoming collapse of a group, or we know that a director with a failed business is about two and a half times, I think is the number more likely to, yeah, sorry, two and a half times more likely for that to happen again in the future. So it's a fantastic way to get a sense of how not only your co the company you're trading with is trading, um, but how the other businesses um, under that director's name, um, how they're performing as well. So the regularity and importance of these alerts cannot be underestimated. It's fantastic to get that upfront proactive alert, letting you know that, hey, the company you're trading with at the moment looks really good, but these other three companies, whether it's in construction, retail, hospitality, et cetera, um, it's important to know when they're starting to struggle because there's an easy domino effect, regardless of whether they are a large corporate enterprise um, company or a small business. You still want to know about uh, changes to the, to the corporate structure, changes to um, the, the credit risk profile across those businesses. Looking at personal insolvencies, um, we obviously have looked at the cross directorships, more corporate side of things, and we're looking at some data on personal insolvency. So 2018-19, um, there was actually a 15% reduction in the number of per, per, uh, personal insolvencies, which is great, um, but it's also important to keep in mind that 17-18, which we're comparing it to, was the worst since the GFC. So while it's a positive change, it's always good to see a big reduction like 15%, we are coming down from as high as it's been since the GFC. Um, and then looking specifically at the September quarter, um, we've seen three and a half, bit over three and a half thousand new bankruptcies, um, and that's a fall of 6.4%. So certainly heading in the right direction from an insolvencies point of view. Um, one little important fact that I've pulled out here from the statistics that came through from AFSA, 25% of bankruptcies are business related. So there's generally a knock on effect. When we see a company go into administration, um, very often, but particularly in SME world, that director with all the guarantees that he has will um, has a high chance of, uh, of becoming uh, personally insolvent or bankrupt themselves. So always important to note. We've got a state-based breakdown here. Basically, every state, I'm pretty sure, I looked at this carefully earlier, um, has seen a reduction um, in personal insolvency activity, and obviously that is the same across 
um, the nation as well, which is a very positive thing to see. Typically, what we see is the personal insolvency is the end of um, you know a, 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 a downturn. Um, so we know that what happens first is the companies get into trouble and then the directors are affected and then we start to see personal insolvencies. What we're starting to see now, for those of you who joined us for the last small business risk review that I did and have read anything about it in the media of late, um, is that we're starting to see an uptick in um, pre sort of insolvency indicators. So things like payment defaults, court actions, winding up notifications. We know that they're the first indicators of, um, of oncoming trouble for the, for the economy and for, for corporate business failures um, because what happens is payment default turns into a court action, court action turns into winding up, winding up turns into an administration. Um, and we're certainly going to see it get tougher um, before, uh, before it gets better, harder before it gets better. Um, and what we're also knowing is um, SMEs in particular being squeezed at both ends of the spectrum. Their suppliers want to be paid quicker and their debtors are paying slower. All right, so that means a real strain on their cash flow. So some stats that we pulled here, looking at specific industries, probably no surprises here. Construction leading the way is the most risky industry in terms of the most number of um, uh, risk alerts being sent on entities in the construction industry, followed by manufacturing, professional, scientific and tech services, whole tra wholesale trade, and of course, retail as well. Um, having a look at court actions, top five worst performing industries across the nation, um, construction, professional services, retail, manufacturing, wholesale trade. So the same five showing up there in a slightly different order. Um, but of course, um, probably no surprise to anyone who is in any of those industries specifically. Construction wouldn't be a surprise to anyone, even if you're not operating in construction. We've already seen a big downturn in, in um in construction out there, as well as new business, uh, sorry, new buildings and new homes. Um, so that's certainly going to get tougher again for them. So please be aware if you are trading with anyone in that space, or you may be trading with someone who is exposed to that space. It's definitely something to keep in mind. Um, more statistics available on our blog. Um, we've got a nice uh, infographic there and an article on industry specific uh, insights from our Q3 small business risk review. So let's have a look at a live demonstration of directed due diligence. We jump over, of course, creditor watch dashboard, very simple tap, type in a business and it will take you through to that particular credit report. Okay, now I'm not gonna go through the whole credit report and I do have a couple more that I prepared earlier. But what we want to look for here is important cross directorship. So imagine this is a, it's either a bad company or a clean company that looks like it's trading well, no signs of adverse information. However, we get down to the cross directorship section, we start to see that their director or directors have a history of failed or failing companies. So if we jump in, sorry, that is loading. I'm just going to load up these other ones as well. Plenty of examples for you to have a look at. So this is a nice one. Um, this company and the directors um, are certainly not in a good state. You can see this particular individual is the director of a number of, of other companies and plenty of those companies are in, um, in, in a poor state. Okay, so you can obviously see this in our credit reports, but then if you look closer, you can see multiple court actions across multiple Entities, multiple payment defaults across a couple of entities there, publish notices, collection notices, critical asset documents, okay? If you were monitoring this particular entity and they were clean, good credit score, trading well, you'd actually be receiving with directed due diligence, email alerts on all of these alerts, all these risk um, events taking place with these other companies that he's a director of. Okay, it's, it's inevitable that all of these entities end up falling over. So what you wanna do, you wanna be at the very beginning of that. You wanna know that those alerts coming through, start reducing that credit limit, outstandings, potentially move them on to COD because you're not comfortable with the exposure um, that you have 
as a result of their failing um, corporate structure or failing companies outside of the one that you're trading with directly. The other thing as part of director due diligence, so that, that I've just showed you is the cross directorship, adverse cross directorship part of it, understanding the other companies that they're involved in as a director and the state of those other companies and receiving alerts along the way. The other part is looking at um, the director themselves or the sole trader in this case and seeing are they a, a possible bankrupt? Have they been bankrupt in the past? Are they currently bankrupt? That sort of thing. So we can see here this particular um, individual is an undischarged bankrupt. Since that took place, he's had a number of defaults against him as well. So we can see uh, two and a half thousand here, eight and a half thousand dollars there. Um, would you do business with someone that has been or is currently bankrupt as an individual or if they are a director? The answer I would assume most of the time is going to be no. Um, even if it is yes, you would certainly want to know about it. So this is the part where as um, part of the upfront due diligence or if you're just doing a, a review on a potential customer, you want to know upfront, do they have any adverse cross directorships? Have they had previous failed companies? Are they bankrupt? Have they previously been bankrupt? And then of course, if you choose to go into business with them, um, regardless of whether it's clean or dirty, you know, sort of history, um, you want to get that ongoing, um, the ongoing alerts along the way. And, and that's where directed due diligence obviously comes in to cover both of those. So if we have a look at the alert section here within Creditor Watch, we can see the normal things coming through, defaults being lodged, but then we've also got adverse uh, cross directorship actions as well. So you're getting those alerts coming through. Very simple. Click through to that particular entity and see their strike off action, and we can have a look at the uh, have a look at the data here. This person is a potential bankrupt as well as having a number of cross directorships. So it's a great way to to understand exactly. Um, what sort of state this particular entity and individual is in. Here's the visual that I created uh, earlier, just explaining adverse cross directorship. So you can take a closer look at that, but essentially Carol is monitoring electric industries. John Smith is the director of that. He's also the director of two other businesses here um, and they have got multiple adverse um, events against them. So Carol would actually receive email alerts when those adverse events take place against the other organisations that he is a director of. So some action points here that we put together. Um, have a look at director due diligence if, if there's some interest there, or you just want some additional basic information or want to refresh in the future. Um, of course, ensure you're monitoring your entire ledger. Don't just monitor companies that have a high credit limit with you or that you feel are um, slow payers or you're aware of the fact that they're going through tough times. The simple fact is you're keeping an eye on them naturally already. It's the ones that you think are trading well um, that ultimately will creep up on you and surprise you and hopefully, um, sorry, unfortunately cause um, a bigger bad debt than the ones that you're already monitoring and are managing on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, for additional due diligence, we've got a couple of other reports that I'll touch on in a second um, and of course, one poll that I did want to ask you guys today is do you want to be contacted about director due diligence? What we're finding is a lot of people um, are interested and they want to be co co uh, contacted a little bit sooner rather than later. So we like to ask that question so we can prioritise our calls and our follow-ups to you directly. So I'll just leave this open quickly for you if you could just answer that. That way um, we're not bugging you if, uh, if there's no interest there. You can be explicit yes or no. Leave it open for a couple more seconds. Great, thank you.
So additional due diligence that I had here for those bigger credit limits, riskier deals, um, if you just feel that you need some more information, of course, we've got UBO reports, which is going to have a look at the ultimate beneficial owner of a company, looking through the shareholders. You can then run um, KYC, AML, anti-money laundering, know your customer screening checks against individuals as well. That's going to flag if they are a politically exposed person, there's any adverse media against them any sanctions anywhere in the world, really nice checks to be performing there. And of course, take it a step further, look at land titles or property reports on individuals. It's a great way to understand, you know, do they have property? Is there any equity in that property? Um, uh, you know, when you're dealing with, um, you know, personal guarantees, if they've got no assets, personal guarantee is, um, is not going to be overly beneficial in the long term. Okay, so just a few other things there, just links with a little bit more information, but of course, feel free to reach out and ask us questions. So what's next? So upcoming webinars, I think we've only got one, maybe two left for the year. The year is quickly running out on us, already the end of November. Um, plenty of resources here. We'll obviously send out slides, send out um, a recording of today's webinar, but if you want a, um, you want a demonstration of directed due diligence or maybe you want it turned on for a week, um, please do get in contact with us. Even if um, if you've said yes to do you want to be contacted, that's great. That's a great first step. We'll be in contact ASAP. Um, but if not, if you have a little read about it and you think about it, contact us later. Um, any sort of support queries, we're, we're, we're open and ready to, to answer them. Live chat, email, phone calls, etc. So don't be shy. Of course, connect with us on LinkedIn, um, Twitter, Facebook, if you're using those as well. We send out plenty of pictures and updates on products and news and whatnot. Um, we're getting more and more that we're filtering through those channels. And that is it for today. Um, I know that there are a couple of questions. Let me just have a look here. Uh, question here. How do you know if the directors are obviously getting along? Yeah, it's a good question. Look, and it's a fairly generalised um, statement that I make earlier, but you can obviously filter through, depending on how big the organisation is, you can obviously look at things like um, newspapers for those public companies. Journalists today are fairly savvy to get, a, to get a feel for whether boards are actually operating well or not. And of course, there are um, the AGM that you can attend or at least monitor as well. For small businesses, much more difficult. But you typically find that a director is the, the business owner and, and operator as well. Um, would the board ever give out their board papers? Uh, yes and no. Um, again, depending on the size of the, the board, or the company rather, you can certainly get access to things like that. Um, there's obviously a, a question here, what is the cost for directed due diligence? Yep, good question. Um, so it's based on your um, the number of entities that you are monitoring. So very similar to the, uh, the similar way of um, pricing that based on what you're paying for your normal credit or watch subscription. So the best thing to do is speak with your account manager or we will get in contact with you to give you an understanding of what directed due diligence will cost. It is a subscription as well. So it would be on top of your Credit Watch subscription too. And that is it today. Very easy um, couple of questions there. Hopefully I've answered them. If not, please, as I said, get in contact and, and uh, challenge us on, on my answers there. Um, but if there's nothing else, I appreciate your time today. Um, thank you for joining us. Have a fantastic day. Have a, a Christmas. If you don't join us again, have a great Christmas and New Year's break as well.